Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Please uh, keep placing your uh, questions in the chat box okay keep placing them I'll come to them in about 10 minutes time um, now the Viterbi algorithm is very very important the reason being that we want to infer the state sequence from the um, observation sequence so there are these start and end uh, places which are important in the sequence you remember in the last lecture we had beginner sentence beginner and sentence finisher sentence finisher is full stop and exclamation and question mark and such punctuation marks and sentence beginner is a fictitious symbol you do not see it on the text okay sentence finishers you see on the text but the understanding is that before the beginning of any sentence there is a hat symbol now now uh, Viterbi algorithm is an efficient algorithm so now I'll uh, go back to our problem our part of speech tagging problem and uh, try to solve the state sequence question efficiently efficiently okay and I'll illustrate why this efficiency question is important so let me go back to our part of speech tagging discussion we are discussing the computation of pause tags also known as decoding so in the mathematical treatment of part of speech tagging how far did we proceed we proceeded up to the stage that we uh, we uh, are setting up an argmax computation t star which is probability of t given w and the t which gives the maximum probability is picked up this is converted to pt into pw given t by Bayes theorem and we have two parameters pt the prior probability and pw given t the likelihood probability then by applying laws of probability joint probability chain rule markov assumption we came to a state that stage that pt is nothing but product of transition probabilities from one tag to another and uh, the likelihood probability pw given t gave me the product of emission probabilities probability of wi given ti okay we came up to this state now given these parameters i would like to find out the best possible tag sequence let me take an actual problem people jump high a fictitious sentence doesn't mean much you can say people laugh loudly and so on so people jump high and from the uh, uh, from the hidden markov model we are able to create the hidden mark from the from the parameters given we are able to create a hidden markov model representation for the sentence so i have the sentence beginner which is hat symbol this is the state my next state is noun or verb because people can be both noun and verb the next state from noun or verb can be a verb or noun again because jump also can be noun or verb from this jump position the second position 0 1 2 second position I go to another two states A and N. A is um, adjective and N is noun. He is on a high. That is a noun uh, situation for high. And the sentence is ending with a full stop. So that is the end state. So you see, I am able to construct from the three words a hidden Markov model with these six plus two eight states and I am also able to record the observation at each position. So, uh, so tune yourself to 
look upon the whole problem as uh, a transition from position to position, which is equivalent to transition from state to state, and observing um, some emission. And the emission in this case is the um, world. So you do see that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the iron and ball problem and post tag and world problem. Okay, so now once I have got this hidden Markov model representation, these states by the way are hidden. That's why hidden Markov model. What is observed is these words. I am asked what is the best possible state sequence. Now those of you who have seen Dijkstra's algorithm have done courses in network. You are immediately able to spot that this is equivalent to finding the best possible path from hat to dot. So my path could have been hat n v a dot or hat n v n dot or hat n n a n. So from every state, whatever is the number of possible states, I can take that and keep multiplying that number. And I have a full tree developed and the path from root to the leaf is a possible state sequence. OK. So. Uh, so the computation of pause tag I illustrate with a. Uh, with an example. So this is the sentence. Brown foxes jumped over the fence. First state is the hat state. Brown can be adjective or noun. Foxes can be noun or verb. To fox means to fool. So foxes can be a plural noun or it can be a singular person, um, sing singular numbers, first person, present tense, verb. Jumped can be a past tense verb or an adjective, the jumped train, for example. Over is a complex word. It can be noun, preposition. Preposition is indicated as IN, adjective, JJ, or a verb, RB, uh, adverb, RB. The has a single tag, which is DT, determiner. Fence can be noun or a verb. Okay, remember all English nouns can function as verb, almost all English nouns. So I see here that these words, which is forming a sentence and are uh, flanked by two special symbols, hat and dot, they have this situation with respect to part of speech tag. Okay, so these are the tags recorded with respect to every word. So now I begin to explore the search space. I start with hat. Now from hat I can go to NN or JJ on seeing the word brown. From there, from NN I can go to NNS and VBS. From JJ also I can go to NNS and VBS seeing the word fox. Then I can go to VBD and JJ from each of these nodes on seeing jumped. Then from VBT, I can go to four states on seeing over. Similarly for JJ, similarly for children of VBS and NSVBS. So you see the tree is growing exponentially. OK, you are taking the product of these numbers. So the tree is growing quite furiously. Then on the I go to DT. Fortunately here the proliferation of tags is somewhat controlled. Only one tag for the but with fence, the proliferation has again increased because it has two tags. And finally, I get dot, which is the final position. So the full tree is not shown. It is not possible to show it without a lot of clutter on the screen. But you get an idea about how the search tree is created. Now from the leaf, to the from the root to leaf describes a path and this path is nothing but the 
part of speech tag path. Okay, and if you have the probability values, which are uh, the transition probabilities from state to state, where do you get them from? You get them from the data, from the data. What data? The part of speech tag data. You have the um, you have the words and their corresponding tags uh, in a corpus, and this becomes your training data. So, uh, and just now, you know, just a little while ago, we understood that emission probability and transition probability can be multiplied by applying the probability algebra, which I'll show you. Uh, so then, therefore, these arcs. OK, these arcs from one state to another, they uh, combine in them emission probability and transition probability. They encode in them and therefore uh, the whole path probability is nothing but the product of probabilities on each arc. Why so? Again, it is because of the Markov assumption and our argmax algebra that we did. OK. So then a natural question to ask for you is that do I have to export the whole tree? Do I have to take each and every path? Then we are dealing with a exponential situation. OK, exponential situation. But it turns out that this is not the case. There is a very clever algorithm called Viterbi algorithm, which gives me a linear time uh, technique for finding the best possible path. OK, linear in the length of the input. OK, so this is linear in the number of words in the sentence. So if each tag, each word had, let's say, n tags, uh, k, ta k tags, each word had, let us say, each if each uh, word had t tags and uh, L is the length of the sentence, L is the length of the sentence, then you can see that after, at every state we'll have an exponential increase in the number of tags. First you will have L children, then you will have L square, then L cube, then L to the power four. This way L to the power N, where N is the number of states. So you'll have to explore a search space of L to the power N, which is exponential and that is not really efficient. But it turns out that we can have a linear time algorithm in the form of Viterbi algorithm, which will be applied to obtain the best possible path. And remember, finding out the best possible path, the best possible state sequence is called decoding. OK, it's called decoding to decide whether transition and emission probability. Now what I will do is that I will take the questions. How this transitional probability is calculated in real world scenario? So Rajendra, uh, Rajendra Jainil Shail is asking this. So the part of speech tagging assignment will make it clear for you. OK, so you will see that from the data you will able to you will be able to get these transition probabilities. How do we calculate the tables? Yeah, you from the data. OK, do the assignment. Uh, then uh, multiplication is only valid when we alternate transitions with emission. No. Multiplication is valid in case of joint independent probabilities, and there is an assumption there. So this maths I'll have to do. Um, this is from Muhammad Ali. Okay. Then um, Akash Bansal difference between two and three. Yeah. So th that was discussed. Two is for finding the probability of a word sequence, and three is getting the parameters of the HMM. Can someone tell which slide is currently being presented? Nikhil was asking. Okay, Nikhil. Had lost the connection maybe at the time. Pankaj Singh, how is the data requirements of HMM training in comparison to other models? Okay, deep learning is the most data hungry. Um, data requirement for HMM is moderate, but you require more data for English than other languages. Kaveri uh, uh, for HMM input is sequence of words. Output is post text. Then what is hidden here? The hidden hidden here is the post tag because post tag you do not see. And you get them in the output, okay? But still, you are carrying out the transitions. There is no uh, sort of work. There is no transition from N to V in the states below people. Is it by design, or is there any specific reason for it? Uh, maybe it's a mistake. I'll go back and look at the slide. 
Vishy Agarwal, isn't the underlying state space same for all input sentences? Mm, underlying state space same for all input sentences? Uh, yes, because if you assume that all words, each word can take all possible tags, then underlying state space will be same. Shreya Pathak, are we only considering grammatical meaning past tags? Ashish Agarwal, what is the difference between VBD, VB, VBS? VBD is past tense, VB is basic verb, VBS is present tense singular number. Okay, so go is VBD, went is, uh, no, went is VBD, go is VB, and goes is VBS. Okay, 